Sure. All right. Hey, everyone. Uh, we're going to do a quick demo of the local Airflow uh, v2 version of Zenimal. Um, so let's see. We got our local Airflow stack already registered here. That is essentially just uh, an Airflow orchestrator with, an, with the default local artifact store. So let me. This and I'll also show you the orchestrator. So we can already see that essentially all the values are left empty here. There's no uh, like an option to set the the orchestrator to local or local false so remote. What is the difference here is that in the local case, Zenable will spin up. Uh, the Airflow web server and scheduler on your machine and run the pipelines there. And in the remote case, uh, that step is simply skipped. And we just generate the DAG file in our, in our case, the zip archive um, that then needs to be copied into the Airflow DAG directory. We can also see that previously Zenimal has been using the Python operator which is now switched to completely containerized execution. And we allow you also now to specify the operator that you're gonna use to run your, to run your Zenimal steps. That could be the Docker operator. It could be Kubernetes pod operator, which runs each step in a separate pod if you're using Kubernetes um, or could be anything else essentially. All right. I think I'm just gonna configure my pipeline here. So this is a really simple pipeline, just two steps. And we're gonna have to run Zenimal stack up. It's now, because my orchestrator is configured to be local, we'll spin up um, the, the Airflow server, which should just take a few seconds. But we can already see that Gives me username, password, and credentials to log in. And now if I run the pipeline, this might take some time due to Docker image building, but once it's done, we should see it on the on the Airflow UI. Right. Yeah, this is probably going to take a minute or so. So if there's any questions, we'll go ahead right now. You can take a shot. Um, does that mean that when you're configuring the Airflow Orchestrator with default settings on your machine, you will also need Docker installed? Yes, that is a new dependency. So like previously, we've used the Python operator, right? Um, but that essentially runs in, in your Python environment of the server. But that ran into so many issues like uh, installing the dependencies there. Um, the entire Airflow DAG had to be defined in a single Python file. It, yeah, so there were a lot of complications uh, doing that. So now, similar to all the other remote orchestrators, it requires Docker to, to build those images. All right. And I have a follow-up to that, if I may. Uh, if existing Zenimal users that have been relying on, well, the, the local Python operator, if they want to continue doing that, is that still supported by Zenimal? No, there, there was really no way to, to make the Python operator work in a clean way with Zenimal. So, uh, even just simple pipelines, which used one big framework, like there's a, there's a big clash in, in concepts of Zenimal and, and Airflow. So for Zenimal, we always require you to import all the dependencies on, uh, at the top of your Python file for type hints. So for example, if your step returns a, a Keras model, you would need to import Keras at the top to like do the type hinting for your step. Um, and that clashes a lot with the vision of Airflow, 
which essentially imports all the dependencies only inside your step. Um, so the, the Airflow web server or scheduler uh, can quickly import your DAG file to show the DAG in the UI. So that's like constantly every few seconds, it reads these Python files that are in, in the DAG directory and generates the Airflow DAGs from that. And we ran into uh, like import timeouts and a lot of issues, which was essentially all related uh, to XenML copying this runner script, which contains the, the pipeline into the DAX directory, which had all these imports and uh, yeah, couldn't import any other local files. So unfortunately, that's not supported anymore. Okay, thank you. Right. Just okay. in time. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Thank you very much. Um, as we can see, we've written this zip file here. I can maybe also just show this to you, what we're doing here. So this is the DAX directory of the local Airflow server. And then writes a writes a zip file in here, which contains on one hand a configuration that, for example, contains the uh, SHA of the Docker image to use for your steps and other stuff to, to recreate the, the Zenimal pipeline essentially as an Airflow DAG. And then it contains a Python file, which reads this config and creates the specific Kubernetes uh, pod operator or Docker operator um, for, for Airflow to know how to run the pipeline. Yes, go ahead. Um, does this mean, or you're using the Docker SHA here, do you not need a Docker registry when you're running locally then because it gets the Docker image through that SHA from your local Docker directory? Yes, absolutely correct. So in local case, this is also validated automatically, but in the local case, the container registry is not needed, but in the remote case, uh, you need a remote container registry. All right, if we refresh it here, or it already ran through, but as you can see, this created a, a pipeline here on, on the Airflow UI, um, already ran it once, both tasks were, were a success, and that essentially happened in, in these Docker operators now. So for each step, Airflow created a Docker container, ran that, executed the ZML step, and yeah, so, so maybe for the, the remote case, the difference is that we don't specifically, or in, we don't necessarily know the DAX directory of your Airflow deployment, right? Um, and potentially that is somewhere where even Zenimal with like all the remote uh, artifact store integrations doesn't know how to copy the file. So, uh, users can still specify uh, a path where the zip file should be written. That might be something locally on, on their machine. I think the, a very common use case of how to use Airflow is that you create this DAG file and you just push it in a Git repository and then there's some periodic sync happening that copies uh, these DAGs from your Git repo into the Airflow server uh, DAGs directory. So in that case, uh, it would just be at like one separate step after running a Zenimal pipeline for the user to make sure that this zip file ends up in the DAX directory. In some other cases like Cloud Composer, where uh, the DAX directory is simply a GCP bucket, Zenimal already knows how to, how to write files there. So you can also configure the, the orchestrator in a way that this file automatically gets written into this bucket and everything happens uh, as in the local case, just seamlessly without any interaction. Perfect, awesome. I think that's, uh, yeah. that's a really awesome. cool uh, like demo. Thank you, Michael, clapping again for this huge effort.